Hi, and welcome to Church Online today at Westside. We're glad to have you with us. My name is Steve Rady, and I am the Director of Care and Facilities here at the church. Before you go full screen, we want you to engage with us online. So jump into the chat window, say hello, give me a shout out, and tell me if you're a coffee, milk, or tea drinker. And today is today's part of the service today. We're going to be hearing some songs of hope and encouragement. We're going to be hearing some practical words of help from God's word. And we're going to be sharing how you can find support no matter what season in life you're in. And for those of you with kids, make sure you stick around after today's message because we're going to have our kids' online experience. Let's get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Join in with this song um, if you know it or if you're familiar with it at all. I'd love to hear you sing on the other end. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb Till I met you And I was breathing but not Yeah. 
you so much for this day that, that you've made, that we got to wake up and, and be alive and rejoice and praise your name, God. We thank you so much for that. We thank you for your tenderhearted mercy, your loving kindness, and that you're always with us all the time, 24-7, and you don't go away. You're always there to comfort us. God, I pray for the people who are watching today, whenever it is and wherever they are, that you will fairly fill the atmosphere that they are in right this moment that um, whatever burden they're carrying, whatever is weighing down their hearts, that you'd be there to lift up their spirits and, and take that burden from them if we surrender it to you. We know that you remind us time and time again that yours is the, big, the victory and the battle is already won. And you tell us that with so much reassurance and so much confidence, Lord. We know that your love is unchanging and always here for us. Um, God, I just thank you that, that you are present to fulfill your promises. Amen. Let's sing this next song. shake and crumble at your name the oceans roar and tumble at your name angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people cry out Lord, of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, oh Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord, yeah, at your name, oh, oh, the morning breaks and flows. Your name, oh, oh, creation sings your story. Yeah, at your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out, Lord of all the earth. We shout your name, shout your name. Skies with endless praise, endless praise. Oh, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. Yeah, there is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. No one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We Praise you, praise you, no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing that there is no one like our God, and we will praise you, praise you, yeah, Jesus, you are God. We will sing, oh, oh, oh. Lord, of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name. Praise in this praise, oh Yahweh, Yahweh. We love to shout your name, yeah. Lord, live on the earth. We shout your name, shout your name. Filling up the skies with in this praise, in this praise, oh Yahweh, Yahweh. We love to shout your name. to start the day. Hey, if you are joining us on Sunday morning, we'd love for you to jump in the chat and click that connect button. There'll be a brief form where you can tell us a little information about yourself, send in a prayer request, and even sign up for some of the opportunities that are going on throughout Westside. 
you'll want to give us your email address because Pastor Gabe will send out some encouraging messages as well as some opportunities that you can look for. Now, if you're here with us for the first time, one welcome. You are in the right place. Go back to that connect button and let us know that this is your first time with us and we're gonna send you a free gift. It's a, it's a book called Sticky Faith and it's written by Pastor Gabe. You'll really love it. It's got some encouraging messages in there so we want you to have that. So jump on that connect button and make sure that you let us know that this is your first time with us. Now, some of you may know, some of you may not, but our Good Neighbor Project is just around the corner and we couldn't be more excited. Last year we were able to do dozens of projects throughout our community, and this year we want to make sure that you save the date for August 30th. It is coming up, so mark your calendars now so that you're prepared to join us for the Good Neighbor Project. But rather than me tell you about all the projects, here's a, here's a quick video of what we did last year. video make sure you mark that date August 30th in fact you can jump on our website or you can use that connect button right now and you can go and sign up for your favorite uh, opportunity to serve we're doing things like Lad Acres and Mountain View Middle School and Aloha High School we're partnering up with several of the churches in the community Beaverton it's awesome we want you to be a part of it so make sure that you go there now I also want you to know that your generosity has allowed us to have these kind of partnerships and make sure that we're a church that is reaching out, things like our online services, our kids in student ministry, and it's because of your faithfulness. So I'd love for you to join me in giving right now. You can text 77977, just text the word WCA, or you can jump online and you can get our information or jump on our app and you can give that way. Or you can grab that little give button that's down in the chat window and we'll send you that information. We are so thankful for your generosity. You guys are truly the heroes that are helping us make a difference in our community right now. Now, we're excited about part three, I Choose Joy. So get your pen and your notes and get ready for Pastor Ken. Well, good morning, everyone. It's so good to be with you this Sunday morning. And it's always a joy. Uh, I think summer's beginning to be here now. And so now we can we can enjoy. But it's a different summer. Don't you agree? I mean, you know, we're staying at home and, and we're doing different things. It's sort of out on trips. And so I miss the trips, though. But it's so good to have you join us today. And we're in a series of I Choose Joy because... You know, even though things have changed and we're home and uh, events are taking change, I still choose joy. And, um, and that joy is mine in him. 
And so we're doing a series in the book of Philippians, and I get to have chapter three. And I love this chapter because uh, it's a chapter that, that talks so much about how you retain and how you get and how you keep the joy that he has provided for you. In fact, it's verse one, he says, whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. And I'll stop there just a second and say, you, you cannot rejoice without the joy. You get the joy from the person of Christ. And then you rejoice. And we rejoice in the Lord because of the joy that we have. And I choose that over everything else. And he says, I never get tired of telling you these things. I do it to safeguard your faith. See, I don't want your faith to weaken because of the events of the world. He said, I want you to know the joy of the Lord, the joy of rejoicing in him. I want you to know it. I want you to have it as yours. See, and, and it is nothing that happens in the world changes that because our joy is him. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? See, and so then we rejoice in him. In fact, I titled chapter three, Because I Know Christ. I know Christ. Not just, that, listen, not just salvation knowing, but I mean, I know Christ. It's just that we walk together. See, and verse eight is tremendous on this. It says, yes, everything else Paul writes is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. See, I mean, you got to really know everything that, that's in the world that we see is really nothing. But the value is knowing Christ, my Lord. See, for his sake, I have discarded everything else, counted it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ, now watch this, watch this, and become one with him. See, there's nothing like being one with Christ. You know what that is? I talk like he talks. I walk like he walks. I set like he sets. I become one. When I was in the Marine Corps, one of the things they taught us is how to be one. And we learned how to march together. I mean, when the left heel hit the ground, see, all the left heels hit the ground. It was a thousand heels hitting, but it was one. When we brought our rifles up and laid them in our hand, it was one. It's, it was a thousand rifles, but it was one. And that's what it is to be one with Christ. When he moves, I move. When he talks, I talk. See, we become one with Christ. And that's what he's writing about here in verse eight. He says, I want you to be one with him. <sighs> now that takes, that takes years maybe as we get to know him. But the first thing is I know him, I become one with him. Does that make sense? It's wonderful, see, because I know him and I become one with him, see. Uh, fact is, when we come to verse 10, Paul talks about knowing Christ in, in order to experience his power. He says this, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing his death. See, I want it all. But I, I really want to know Christ, and I want to experience it in my life. It's one thing to know him and, and know about him. See, a lot of folks, we know about him, and we know things about him. But do we know him? Is our walk, when his heel hits the ground, does ours hit it? When we lay something, that rifle in our hand, 
See, is it just in tune with his? See, <laughs> when I remember when I first went into the to the Marine Corps, I remember that they, they got us in line and we said, okay, we're going to march. Left foot first. Ready? Oh, it was a mess. But you know, we got to be one. And God says, I want you to know me so well. And I want you to experience me. When I got out of the Marine Corps, I moved up here to Portland to go to Bible college. It was at that time, uh, Multnomah School of the Bible. Now it is uh, uh, Mul Mul Multnomah University. And that's where Gabe Melissa graduated from, fact is, and uh, many others. But it was something, I met this man, the, the vice president and founder of the school, Dr. Mitchell. And when I uh, met Dr. Mitchell, he meant so much to me. Uh, I mean, you know, he was a man that lived. He was known for the scriptures. He had that Scottishness about him. He spoke with a Scottish accent. And, oh, he was so wonderful. And, and he was so personal. And one time, Karen and I was at the school, and we were walking down this hallway, and he came out of a classroom. And he said to me, he said, well, hi, Ken. And he said, who's that with you? And I said, this is my wife at that time, Karen. And he said, well, good to meet you, Karen. Oh, he was so gentle. And he said, so, are you doing okay in college here? Are you, uh, is there anything you need? Because I would sure help you with it. And, you know, he laid his hand on my shoulder as we walked. Uh, and I thought, I feel like the Lord has laid his hand on my shoulder. The man knew Christ so well. He experienced Christ in his life that when I was in his presence, I almost felt like I was in the presence of the Lord. Why? Because he knew Christ so well. He was experiencing Christ so well. And even when he died at 97, he was a man that had so walked with Christ. Does that make sense to you? See, that's getting to become one with him. That's becoming to get to know him. See, see. When we come out of this, it should be that we be closer to him. That we know him better. Does that make sense? We, I want to know him better. I want to reach... I want to reach a place where that we just know each other. I want that for you. I want that for your home. That when you walk down the hallway, people say, wow, he has walked with God. He is Christ. He knows him. He knows him. He, he knows him. He breathes when Christ breathes. He steps when he steps. He sets when he sets. He knows Christ, see. Well, that's what I want. He was a copier for me. And then verse 14. He says, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. The end of the race. It isn't, see, we got this, well, I want to be first, second, or third. No, no, you just end it. You come to the end of the race. Some are faster than others. <laughs> you know, they really are. Some, some go really good. And then there's me. But he says, I want you to come to the end of the race. That's what I want. I want you to, to end it. I often thought about that heavenly prize. I wonder what that'd be. Uh, I thought a new Corvette would be pretty neat for a heavenly prize. Wouldn't it be something to drive a new Corvette in the streets of heaven? Huh? Uh, oh, well. But to come to the end of the race, and, and as you know him, when Dr. Mitchell passed away, he didn't have to be introduced to the things of heaven. You know, because he already knew. When he saw Jesus, he was so in touch, he, he knew him. 
See, that's what he said. When we come to the end of the race, it's just another step into the, his, his presence. See, you see. The joy comes because, too, they were citizens of heaven. Uh, here, verse 20 and 21. Verse 20 says, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. I love that. Don't you like that? Citizens is residence. I'm a resident of heaven. See? And my life should reflect that. See? Now, I'm an American. And I'm proud. And I was willing to give my life for that while I served in the Marines. But I'm a citizen of heaven. See? That's my residence. That's where my papers are, if you please. See? And uh, I want to walk like a citizen. He says, it's where the Lord lives. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. See, the first time he came, he came as a baby and died on the cross. But this time, when he returns... Here's what he's going to do. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into his glorious body like his own. Using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. See, it's, see when he comes next time, he's coming for the citizens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's time to come home, kids. It's time to take up your citizenship where you live. This is it. See, sometimes we get, we get so caught up in everything here. You know, we just, uh, everything captures us. And we forget where our citizenship is. We forget he's coming, he's coming again. See, he's not done. We have a great future, a great future. It's with him. And that brings me great joy. I choose that. See, that I could just be with him, knowing that what he's going to do is change us to his image. Boy, to be like, to be with him. You know what I love about heaven? You know what I love about heaven? Well, Re I don't have it, but Revelation 21, 4 says that there's no more tears, there's no more death, there's, there's no more sorrow, there's no more crying, there's no more pain. That brings me great joy. See? See? You want to you wanna read on the resurrection, you need to go to John chapter 11, and 1 Corinthians 15, and 1 Thessalonians 4, and here in Colossians 3. Talks about what he's going to do, because we know him. And that brings me great joy, see. It's wonderful to know him. I pray for you as a believer. I pray for you. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. He says, So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and unmovable. See? Don't let anything move you aside. We're in Him. Our citizenship is in heaven. He's our joy. So always work enthusiastically for the Lord. Don't back up. Don't let this all get over with and we're not strong. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. See? The words we speak, the waves we give, The hugs that we give that are air hugs, <laughs> you know. 
They're not useless. I tell people all the time how much I love them and how much I do love you. I want you to come out of all of this and down the road, however long it is, strong and immovable because you know him, see. He's your joy. He's your strength. He's our future. And we become one with him. It won't be strange. It won't be strange. I've often thought about this. Yesterday, as I sat on my swing in the backyard, I thought I just want to so know him that we're, heaven won't be strange. If God takes my last breath, I'll recognize everything. I know him. See, I want you to know him. Can I ask you, do you know him? Do you know him as, as your wonderful Lord? May I invite you that if you don't, you would. Even this very morning, you would say yes to Jesus. There's a place on there, on the chat that you just say, I raise my hand to say, I invite Jesus to be mine today. He provided for us. He forgave us of all of our sins. And he wants you to say, Jesus, come into my life and be my savior, be mine. Boy, when that call comes, when 1 Thessalonians 4 says, when he comes, be ready for the shout. That's our future. He's going to come and take us in his presence. We're going to get to hug him. And I'll get to kiss him on his cheek and he on mine. That's my future. I know, I know him. And I won't be strangers. I'm a citizen. See? And you need to know him. He loves you. He, he wants to come into your life and be yours. Let me pray just for you, Father. I pray for those that are listening to me that have never said yes to you, that right now they would raise their hand and say, Jesus, I invite you to come into my life, forgive me of my sins and be mine. I want to know you. I want to walk with you, be in step with you. God bless everyone that makes that decision. And then I want to pray for you that are believers, that you'll be unmovable, you'll be strong, You'll come out of this powerful, see, because you've got to know him. Father, I pray for every one of us that are believers, that Lord, we'll be unmovable, we'll be strong. We'll walk with you. We'll be so in step with you. And Lord, that our knowledge of you will grow and we'll become to know you in such a powerful way that when we put our hands on someone's shoulder, they'll feel this man knows Christ. Father, I give you our lives today. We love you and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless each one of you. Thank you for joining us today. We want to make sure that you text JOY to 503-905-9067. That is JOY to 503-905-9067. And if you have not already followed us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, make sure you do that today so you can see everything that's going on throughout Westside as well as get some encouragement throughout the week. We're so glad and excited. We want to invite you back next week for part four of I Choose Joy. We look forward to having you. Make sure you invite a friend. Let your families know. Send the link out on the invite.
And for those of you with kids, you're going to want to stick around because in one minute, we're going to have our kids' online experience. God bless you guys.